Hey guys, Le Peddler back with another video. Today I'm going to be comparing expensive bib shorts to moderate or cheap bib shorts. Now in terms of pricing, depending on what you find expensive or cheap, this is all relative to what I find expensive and cheap because in cycling, usually things are more expensive. These are not $20 bib shorts or $30 bib shorts. So in cycling, usually things that are going to be decent, at least rideable. Now this is no Chinese uh, bibs. Uh, I will make a video in the future, maybe why you shouldn't even buy Chinese bibs, but just quickly guys, in the first you know season of cycling, I bought Chinese bibs and they were just absolutely terrible. If you guys aren't familiar, the chamois is like probably the most important part of a bib because that's the part that's gonna you know save your bum from any chafing or anything. And the Chinese bibs are actually pretty terrible. Now I know there's you know one or two that you might get lucky that are doable. I've experienced I think one out of like I think six that I had at the time that was actually rideable. But in terms of just overall quality, I don't suggest it. So for this video, I'm just putting that out there. You got the expensive one and you got the, the cheap or moderately priced one. And we're gonna compare and see what are the key differences. And then at the end, what do I really suggest? So right here, guys, I have the expensive bib shorts and these are the Elevate bib shorts made by Cure in partnership with Giant, I'm pretty sure. And these retail for 229 USD. So a steep investment for obviously a pair of bibs, but these are the premium in terms of top of the line that I would really say a bib can actually go for. And I'm gonna explain what you get in terms of just the overall build quality and just the componentry that makes it so expensive. So in terms of the components, I would say the first big thing is the bib shorts. Now my teammate always used to say, you can tell the quality of a bib based on how marshmallow feeling uh, the bibs felt in terms of the chamois. So you can see that this chamois, I don't know if you guys can see it, obviously you guys can't feel it, but in terms of how this feels, it is so nice. It has different pressure points depending on where it is in the chamois. And you can just tell with expensive bib shorts that the chamois is usually where all the money goes into. If you guys aren't familiar with that, just super important that you guys understand that because you know, a lot of times it's very hard for people to understand. Even me at the beginning, that's why I bought Chinese bibs. I was like, there's no way cycling bib shorts need to be $100 minimum. So why can't I just get a cheap pair? And you'll see really fast, you'll feel it actually really fast that you're spending money to protect yourself in the long run. So for the premium one, you're getting a high, high quality uh, chamois, which I think is super insane. Now, this is pretty much across all premium bibs. Now, not only this one, you'll see these similar features in expensive ones. So this is pretty general, applies to pretty much all expensive bibs. And also when I go to the moderate or cheap bibs. So you can see the next big feature that makes this premium is the leg cuffs. So if you guys can see right there, it has some nice textured uh, material that keeps uh, the leg shape in terms of the cuffing around your uh, thighs, which is super nice. You can just see right there how premium that looks. Um, I've ridden, like I said, a lot of bibs and I will be showing you the moderately expensive ones or the cheap ones and you don't get this feature. And in this feature, when you have it physically on your body, it is so nice, it is so comfortable. You feel literally at one with the bib, which I find important if you're spending a lot of time cycling. Uh, I do on average 500 to 600 kilometers a week. So having a high quality pair of bibs, especially outside with long train days, is just gonna make you more encouraged, more comfortable. And if you're more comfortable, I will say this, if you're more comfortable, you're gonna be able to ride for longer periods of time. And that's absolutely what the whole point of having good uh, quality uh, equipment is all about. And now the next key feature that I really like with the expensive bibs is just in terms of the ventilation. Uh, one thing that you don't see on moderately expensive bibs or cheap bibs is the ventilation that goes into um, the suspenders that hold, hold the, the bibs up. And just how this was designed, you can just see very high quality in terms of the meshing that they use. I will be comparing it because you do sweat near the back, right? That's where a lot of the sweat uh, comes from. But all in all, I would say looks, aesthetics, construction, you're paying for the chamois, that's the most expensive part, then you're paying for the cuffs, and then just the overall build quality in terms of the material that they use, in terms of how it wicks away the sweat. I will be putting it on, I just wanna show you guys right off the start, uh, the key differences. So the next pair of bibs we're gonna be taking a look at is the Podium Bib Shorts, which retail for 129 USD. And these are the cheap, moderate, expensive bibs. Now you can tell right off the start, if we compare the chamois, I don't know if you guys can see it, this one just looks higher quality. Then again, I haven't ridden 10,000 kilometers on this yet, but I've ridden 10,000 kilometers with these bibs so far this year. So it has seen its pretty fair share of lots of uh, washing and riding. So you, you can give it the benefit of the doubt, but you can just see right here, if I show you actually the sides of it in terms of how they're actually sewn in terms of the chamois, you can see that this chamois is not as nice as the premium chamois. And in terms of how it feels, this one feels like a marshmallow. Like it is so fluffy and soft. And this one's pretty firm, right? Like pretty, pretty, uh, not, not, you don't get the same marshmallow feeling. You don't get the same 
uh, bounciness in terms of the compression. So this one is not gonna be as comfortable, which I've already tried both of these on. I've ridden with both of these on on the trainer when I originally got them. I haven't ridden outside with these ones yet, but just from sitting on the bike and just seeing how it feels, this one feels a lot better. Now, like I said, the cuffs, let's see what you get on the moderate, cheap, expensive. You see how the cuffs are just normal. You don't get any textured material. It's just normal, just normal stretchy material where if we compare that back to the expensive bibs, you can see the textured material. So in terms of high quality, you're getting the high quality here. The moderate one is, is just normal. And then the next thing that you don't see, which I already talked about, is in terms of the mesh, they use the same meshy pretty much all around. So you see how the meshing doesn't really change, it's all one piece. If we look at the meshing here, it changes. So they have a thinner mesh in the middle, which wicks away, let me see if you guys can see that. Oh, I, I gotta show you guys on this side. See how it has a thin mesh on the middle and then the side mesh is different where it holds you up. So it wicks away the sweat differently based on how it falls on your back. So in terms of just the overall thought process in terms of both builds, you can just tell the premium one, is just gonna be better. That's just the reality. When you spend more, usually, you get a better performance. Now, I already talked to my channel, I'm a man of best values. So now before we end the video, I will have to show what it looks like on me. So let's see that right now. So right now I have the moderate or cheap bibs on right now. And as you guys can see, it's really nice. You know, the cuff is pretty good, but all in all, you know, it holds, holds everything in place in terms of the fit, the straps, pretty good. And other than that, pretty, uh, Pretty solid, solid fit we got going on. And now it's time to see how the expensive ones look on me as well. Right now, I'm currently wearing the more expensive bib shorts and you can see that right here, it's a lot better in terms of how it cuffs around my leg. Then again, I wouldn't say it's night and day in terms of uh, how it holds it. It's just a little bit better. Now, th that's what I mean in this video is that you'll only really experience even the back in terms of how it holds it and how it wicks away the sweat. You'll only really feel that if you're doing long, long kilometers on the bike. Now, the only key difference I really see on the expensive ones compared to the cheap one is that the chamois protects this area a lot better on the expensive one. So I do like that. And that's what I mean. If you guys are doing long, long kilometers, you know, you do want expensive bibs. If you guys are riding anywhere between 200 to 300 kilometers a week, or even less than that, I would say definitely getting the moderate expensive bibs are gonna be, you know, totally fine. They've lasted more than 10,000 kilometers. They've served their job. They still do a pretty good job at protecting my butt in terms of chafing or anything, in terms of comfort. So I'm very impressed. But all in all, guys, you know, $129, definitely you need to spend that at least. Just having a bib is so important. You guys will thank me in the long run because having a chamois that's gonna protect you is just gonna make you ride longer. So there's no point of cheaping out on it. Especially, you know, if you have one bib or even, I would say one or two bibs, it's totally fine. If you have one bib, yeah, you're gonna be washing it every day. That's pretty normal, <laughs> that's what I do. But uh, super, this is a really good investment. People really overlook this. Now, in terms of the expensive one, when do I suggest the expensive bib? I would say it's for anyone that's, you know, riding 400, 500 kilometers a week, uh, doing long, long rides. So maybe sometimes, you know, yesterday I did 70 kilometers. So this would be totally fine for 70 kilometers. It, it would hold up pretty nicely in terms of comfort and everything. But days where I do 130, 140, and maybe some long summer days, 160, 200 kilometers, we'll get there with the vlogs, especially you guys will see some gravel stuff uh, with long kilometers. But this is where I would want this bib because if you're doing anything for more than three or four hours, comfort should be number one priority. And that's where, you know, you get the added $100 uh, performance in terms of the bib and just how it overall sits on your body. So if you guys did enjoy this comparison between the expensive bibs and the cheap bibs, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you guys do enjoy this equipment comparisons on the bike in terms of biking equipment, uh, feel free to comment what you guys would like to see next. I love making it. I love bringing you guys more content in terms of the stuff that I use and in terms of my experience with biking equipment in general. So it'd be greatly appreciated if you can comment some suggestions. And until the next one, keep on pedaling.